All right, so welcome once again to our GMDC tutorials. Today we'll, I'll be presenting on the Viva session. And these are actually samples from October 2020. Yes, samples from October 2020. Unfortunately, due to the time factor, most of you are writing it by Monday, Tuesday, you know, next week to be precise. I will not be able to go through the answers with you guys. However, what our advice is this. Let's make use of the comment session, okay? Whereby when I put in the question, of course, after watching, whatever part that you can answer or whatever question that you can answer, just write it in the comment session so that your friends can learn from you. And of course, you can also learn from them. In that way, we are all preparing ourselves for the exams. But if I have to go through all the answers with you, trust me, that this will be a 10 hour video and i think we don't have that time all right so for now that's what we're going to do so if you're new here i think you might want to consider subscribing to this channel so that in future you can have something similar all right so let us zoom in let us not waste time okay all right unfortunately i've grouped everything as one okay i've grouped everything uh, terra, uh, internal medicine uh gynecology whatever all of them have included as one okay so we'll be going through them so some of the questions that we got or uh, that came in 2020 one of them were what epidemic was going on in the north during the COVID pandemic of course <laughs> some of you already know it okay of course they were asking to talk about cerebrospinal meningitis the signs and symptoms then you were asked some people were asked to demonstrate the following neck stiffness uh, kenneth's sign so as you are going through it please do well to answer them in the comment section and of course the confirmatory test for meningitis what test will you do then how to do lumbar puncture you can also talk about or you'll be asked to talk about the indications the contraindications and of course the therapeutic uses of lumbar puncture all right then complication of meningitis complications of meningitis so these are these are actually some of the internal medicine questions that came but of course there are more there are more how will you differentiate dyspnea in a pneumonia patient and then in ccf that's heart failure patient how are you going to differentiate dyspnea that is difficulty in breathing how are you going to differentiate between them and how will you measure JVP management of CCF? That's heart failure. How will you manage it? Hypertension and its treatment. Hypertension is one of the highest questions that you don't want to get it wrong when you are being asked. Then the side effect of furosemide. Side effect of furosemide. Side effect of furosemide. All right. Then checks examination. On a dummy, <laughs> so they'll give you something to do your check examination on. Me, particularly, this sometimes a question like, uh, you know, locate the apex beat. Don't talk, just locate it by doing examination on it to locate it. <laughs> yeah, so please, if you don't know it, group as I mean, form groups and answer these questions together, it will help. Then there was a question on a plural effusion on x ray. There was a question on plural effusion on x ray. Features of plural effusion in examination or on examination, then how it occurs or how it happens, plural effusion, then types of percussion, types of percussion, then examination of the trachea, hmm. trachea, how will you examine the trachea? Then, what are we looking at for again? Differences between para, uh, paraplegia and paraparesis so please know the differences between them differential diagnosis for paraplegia differential diagnosis differential diagnosis then features of parkinson's disease parkinson's disease then how will you elicit power on examination so talking about power you must also would like to also go further and then consider gcs that's a, a Glasgow coma scale. Know it, know it, know them. 
know them. Because usually they move hand in hand, power and uh, because they are all ways of checking the consciousness level. So please just take note of some of these things. These are some of the questions that came. So please, very, very essential, of course. Uh, favorite question that people, I mean, they normally ask placenta brochure, definition and its management. Please know it. How to differentiate between abrosio and previa clinically. Uh, treatment of a woman who is 10 centimeters dilated and the fetus is alive. Treatment. Okay, maybe the delivery isn't it. Anyways, please let me know in the comment section, okay? Then mention gynecological emergencies that you saw during your clinicals. So this kind of question, they want to know if you really went for clinicals or not. And what are some of the things that you saw? And one thing is that don't go and mention anything you are not sure of. Don't mention, don't forget we have also what to call obstetric emergencies. This is gynecological. So please know those gynecological what, emergencies like the PID and stuff like that. Now, when you, when you begin to mention them, they can do a follow-up question on one of them for you to talk about. So please make sure you are talking about things that you know for sure in case they should pause you and then do a follow-up question, which some people <laughs> got. And some of the questions can ask you a topic pregnancy, its management, and things like that. Uterine rupture, all of these things, they can be asking you. They can be asking you. All right. Then what do you know about uh, antipartum hemorrhages? Antipartum hemorrhage, what do you know about them? The differential diagnosis, differential diagnosis, types of abortion. Uh, how will you differentiate clinically between incomplete and complete abortion? All right. Then how will you manage abortion? Septic complete, septic complete and incomplete. How will you man um, manage these types of what? abortion? How? How? And how will you know if the uterus is empty after evacuation? How are you going to know it? Please, let me know in the comment section, okay? Let me know in the comment section. All right. Then a patient 20 years with bleeding per vaginum comes to you. How will you diagnose? Or what will be your differential diagnosis? They are looking for it, differential diagnosis. So bleeding... Per vaginum, what are your differentials? Please, this is not a fallacy. This is not a fallacy. These are questions that people were given. So please, do justice to them. Then you might want to look at for vaginal discharge. Then you have to mention five causes and then five microorganisms and their drug of choice. So if you're not sure, please, Please don't mention them. But if you are sure, mention it and give uh, the drug of choice that you use it for. Vaginal discharge. Then mention five viruses that can affect a pregnant woman. Guys, viruses, not bacteria. Viruses. So please, do justice to it. Then the question on vertical transmission. Uh, how will you prevent HIV by vertical transmission? And also, what will you do after delivery? What are you going to do after delivery? And even the mode of delivery. Would you like to do CS, vagina, whatever? Please let me know in the comment section. Okay, let's make it interactive. Let's make it inter because of time. Let's make it interactive. I'm trying to be fast as possible. Then what should be the mode of feeding in a baby when the mother is HIV positive and why? <laughs> this question were asked. I mean, a lot of people got this question. Okay. So when the mother is HIV positive, what is the mode of feeding? Are you going to go by, you know, strictly uh, breastfeeding or, you know, by doing winning or formula feeding? How? Please. 
you know what I'm talking about. All right, so please let me know in the comment section. So we have a 900 gram baby was presented to you while at Nikko. What are the complications? What are the complications? Don't forget, a 900 gram, that means this baby could be pretend in a way or it's too small. So please, what are the complications you can be looking at for? Then a baby with persistent vomiting, what will you do for the child and what investigations will you do? Persistent vomiting, vomiting. What are you going to do? What are you thinking about? Ish. But why are all the spaces over there? Anyways, so we have... Hmm. Guys, sorry for this. But basically, we have nine months child with intermittent crying, blood, diarrhea, or bloody diarrhea. Then talk about the differential. So intermittent crying, bloody diarrhea. What are your differentials? What are your differentials? Then name. Then what is the name given to gastroenteritis? Okay, with a bloody diarrhea. And what organisms? are causing it very interesting question so gastroenteritis with bloody discharge what organism is causing it then gastroenteritis management examination of the abdomen of the baby in interception so you have a baby with interception what examination are you going to do then what are your management what will be your management Please, these questions, they come a lot. So please do justice to them in the comment section. Okay, I think the same question, examination of the abdomen of a baby. Yes. Now, there's a case scenario on jaundice. So somebody was giving a question on jaundice. Then some of the questions you must, they might ask you are the types, the investigation you would do, management, types, investigation, management. Okay. Then quadrants and the nine regions of the abdomen. Yes, the nine regions of the abdomen. You know how it is. Uh, I think something like this. Yep, something like this. So please, the nine regions. Talk about it. Talk about it. Talk about it. And if possible, what organs can be found at the upper uh, right quadrant? Upper right quadrant, left upper uh, epigastrium, uh, the umbilical area. What organs can be found? So please, and you have to draw this kind of diagram. Or draw it. Let them know what you're talking about. So please, do that. All right. So now we're having a, an umbilical stump. How? So the question now is, uh, how are mothers used to clean in the past? And what is recommended now? So they had some old ways of doing things, you know, our mothers. The old ways of doing things. So talk about it. And what is the recommended or what is recommended nowadays or in modern medicine? Let me put it that way. And uh, so the definitely this is a therapy, I mean, hygiene, uh, public health question. So diseases that are embarked for elimination and eradication, both in Ghana and worldwide. So please know the diseases that are embarked for elimination, neonatal and maternal tetanus. Neonatal and maternal tetanus. Know about it. Preventive measures against neonatal tetanus. Preventive measures. Know it. Then vaccination against tetanus. And who receives what? Who receives what? So vaccination. Then vaccination for infants up to one year. So, you know, in, when it comes to Ghana, there is this vaccination chart. Or immunization chart at birth what are the types of uh, vaccines you give at six months at uh, in fact six weeks six months you know nine months one year those things you must know it you must know it and if possible you can get to know the doses or the mode of uh, of giving it it will help the mode of giving it and if possible the diet uh, the doses, it will really help. All right. Population structure, population structure, classify it according to age group. 
according to the age group, classification of contraceptives, and give examples in each case. Contraceptives, and then give examples in each case. All right. Then food fortification. So what is food fortification? What is it all about? You should research on these things and then know it. Like I said, time won't permit us to go to the questions. So classification of vitamins. You know, the fat soluble, all the kind of stuff. Then vitamin A schedule. How to give or what is the schedule for vitamin A on EPI? That is the expanded program on immunization. What is the protocol or the schedules, basically? Why do we give vitamin K at birth? So, so it means that you give vitamin K at birth. So why? 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 All right. Then talk about BMI. BMI, body mass index. Body mass index. Body mass index. Talk about it. So basically, types of obesity, you might end up talking about obesity and things like that. Type 1, type 2, type 3, all the kind of things. And the values corresponding to it according to the BMI. So please, get to know all of these things. Master them like crazy. Master them. Then differences between endemic, epidemic, and pandemic. Differences. Endemic, epidemic, and pandemic. X-ray dangers. What are the dangers related to X-ray? What are the protective equipment to use? And how, sorry, who do you report radiation exposure to? Who do you respond, sorry, do you report it to? Who? Uh, so there's a question on, uh, somebody was giving this question. So assuming you are in a classroom, okay, and you are giving 30 people, I mean 30 students in a class and you are to select 10 people, how, sorry, how are you going to do it? How are you going to do it? So this talk about sampling. Uh -huh. So you must know the types of sampling as well. And what about sampling are you going to use in this particular case? Very interesting. There are different ways of doing it. It could be random. It could be, you know, please. I don't want to talk to plenty about answers. So just let me know what you think in the comment section. And again, as you write it there, when I see the comment, I'll come in and then see what you are writing. And please, all those that are watching, if you have questions that were uh, asked during uh, October or any question at all, please write it in the comment section. People want to learn. So let's interact or let's get interactive. Okay. All right. So, what other types of sampling do you know? What is a demographic transition? What is a demographic transition? Actually, personally, I got these questions. Uh -huh, I got these questions. So, uh, demographic transition, what are the factors of demographic transition? All of these things, you should know them. They should be on your fingertips, guys. They should be on your fingertips. And trust me, the, the, the public health people, some of them are very, very friendly. In fact, most of them are friendly. All right, so we have what? A boy went to play football and someone kicked uh, his abdomen and he experienced a general abdominal pains and tenderness. What will you do for him? So first of all, you must know what they're talking about. You know, guys, know what they're talking about and what are you going to do for this person what are, so this is an emergency case in a way isn't it so what are we going to do for this person they mention five differentials for swelling on the skin in other words mention five differentials for cutaneous swellings cutaneous swellings please mention them mention them uh, so they show someone not me, I mean someone, okay? A swelling on a phone. So there's a phone, they show you more of a picture. Then at the back, the, the swelling grows slowly, uh, slowly, okay, for eight months. Then there's a characteristic black center and a dark color swelling. And the question is, what is your diagnosis? 
what is your diagnosis good so please take note of it then they showed someone an x-ray of air under the diaphragm there is air under the diaphragm you know what that means right of course you do so what are your differentials let me know in the comment section then they showed someone again an x-ray with a multiple out portion so again what are your differentials your differentials your differentials and of course how does uh, diverticulosis occur how does diverticulosis okay how does it okay all of these you should know now a case of a patient in a surgical room for two weeks who developed unilateral leg strain okay so that means that there's a case and the person is having what a unilateral leg swelling and the person has been admitted at the surgical ward or the surgical room so definitely give differentials unilateral leg swelling differentials then how will you clinically differentiate your differentials okay so there's a case of a 30 year old with a generalized abdominal pain and vomiting how will you manage this patient abdominal pain and vomiting how will you manage this patient please uh, let me know let me know then how will you differentiate vomiting in an acute pancreatic pancreatic patient not pancreatic patient pancreatic patient and that of uh, a peptic ulcer disease patient so how are you going to differentiate the vomiting the vomiting the vomiting so this is a question that people go to then we are having on the uh, digital uh, rectal examination of i mean for hemorrhoids for rectal cancer and then for anal cancer the question is differentiate them on dre or on dre differentiate them what would be your differentials or how you're going to differentiate hemorrhoid from rectal cancer and then from anal cancer that is your question that is your question so please let us know in the comment section all right so guys basically this is just a summary of everything that happened not everything but some or let me say most of the thing that happened